Good morning. This is Hammer Smith Chess Club, the weekly endgame workshop in five minutes or so. This video is the summary of the fourth and last session we had in April and May 2020 on a specific type of rook endgames. Rook endgames with one pawn. Here we're going to study rook endgames with rook pawns. These have a high drawish tendency, though not everything is as drawish as it looks. There are four principled positions defined by which of the four pieces, the two kings and the two rooks, stands in front of the pawn. It is an ironclad draw if the defending king stands in front of the pawn, a kind of Philidor position reinforced. As long as the defending rook stays on the eighth rank or gives checks from the side, there is no way to expel the defending king from his hideout. Either rook h6 check and draw or rook g8 and the rook stays on the eighth rank. If it is the defending rook standing in front of the pawn, it all depends which king arrives first at the pawn, either to defend it or to capture it. In the first example, it is white to move and arrive first. In the second, same position with black to move, black to arrive first and capture the pawn. Same principle applies in this, black, white to move first, arrive first, now that allows, that indeed forces black to free the rook, which brings the white rook behind the king to expel it, and white can win. Last example, now here is black to move first, so white has no means to defend the pawn. It is getting slightly more difficult in case the attacking king is in front of the pawn. He needs to escape from his prison for the pawn to promote. A three-stop maneuver by the rook accomplishes this. One, two, three. One specific tactic has to be remembered. A rook sacrifice to push the defending pawn, uh, king away from blocking the attacking king. That comes in this position. Rook c7 check. Either to push the defending king away or to lure it into capturing the rook. And then there is an end game, queen versus rook. In this case, indeed, the rook is captured on the next move. If alternatively, the king moves away to either side, depending on which side it goes, different escape routes open up for the attacking king. Or if going to e5, then the escape route path is via c6 and b c7 and b6. It should be noted as well that the maneuver only works with the defending king far away on the file on the f file. If it is closer, as in this example, the defending king will be able to block the escape path. Once the king has arrived on c8 or c7, it stays there and the defending rook stays on the C file. And there is no way for the attacking rook to push the defending king away and for the attacking king to escape. The most difficult scenarios are the ones where the attacking rook is in front of the pawn. It is still relatively easy with the pawn on the seventh rank. These are the most easy to defend. These positions are drawn if the defending king can either reach g7 or h7 and stays there, or it is able to reach the pawn, starting from d7. Once the advancing king touches the pawn, as we see in this example, so the black king only moves between g7 and h7, once the advancing king touches the pawn, it will be checked forever from the rear. 
If the king is caught on e7 or d7 with white to move, let's go back to this position. So on e7 with white to move, white can go to h8 and um, black can take capture the pawn, but white can capture the rook. Or, um, of course, if the black king goes away, the pawn will promote anyway. Now, if the king, the black king leaves ever the seventh rank, then there will be an immediate check on the eighth rank plus subsequent promotion. In specific circumstances, though, the defending king can hide from the eighth rank checks behind the attacking king. Hiding. And once in the corner, there will be perpetual checks. Again, back to the h6 position. The same position as we had started with, with white to move, the attacker can still win due to specific circumstances. White arrives first. White arrives first, moves the pawn to c8, allowing black to capture the pawn. However, now white can give a discovered check and simultaneously attack the rook. So that confirms it is never as easy as it seems and scenarios have always to be calculated. The most difficult defending procedure is against the pawn on the sixth rank, where the attacking king has a natural hideout on a7. You have to know the Vancouver position, which is drawn. And that's the Vancouver position. This is pawn on the sixth rank, defending king on g7, defending rook on f6. From here, the rook can check the attacking king from the, side, from the side without being blocked by his own king. And the king is on g7, safe, whenever the pawn threatens to advance to the seventh rank. We had seen that earlier. Check, 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 check. Well, staying on the sixth rank to immediately return to the Vancouver position when necessary and when possible. Ankura back. In most practical cases, the defender needs to coordinate well the rook and the king to arrive at the Vancouver position. For example, here, the immediate Vancouver setup would not work. That would be the attempt rook f3 check, rook f6. Of course, white can exchange rooks and the pawn will advance. Here, the rook has to move in from behind. A5 check, rook h5, and then rook h6. Check, rook f7, Vancouver. Or similar, if there is rook a7 check, for example, no problem to go to g8, we can set up the Vancouver position, and now we have it, and it's a draw.